All right, so I'm going to try this guide series again. I had some feedback from my son that the first guide video we had made for a car mechanic simulator, unfortunately, uh, was very laggy. And I think it was probably due to some settings on my uh, system here. So we're going to retry this. So first step, when you get into Car Mechanic Simulator, I would head over to your game, go down to settings first. Sorry, my head's in the way here. There's video settings, set whatever you like. Uh, pay attention to your control rebinds. But... Uh, and rebind these if you feel necessary. Sound settings, I have it set to 10% game volume so you can hear my voice better. Ambient sounds off. We're on English language and then go over to settings, uh, game settings, the wheel at the far right. This is where I spend a fair amount of time. I like my gearbox at manual. If you want an auto, great. If you get the drag racing DLC, you're gonna have to use a manual transmission to drag race. So that's, that's uh, tip number one. I like the uh, events enabled. Um, if there's a Christmas event, uh, you'll get like lights around your shop. It, it, it's fun stuff. Turn that on. Uh, show friends. Turn that on. And the reason being, if you have friends on your Steam friends list, uh, when you're doing the drag racing and the drag racing DLC, your friends can actually uh, be listed as one of the opponents that you could drag race against, which is really cool. Car steering sensitivity, mine I set at 80%. You know, play with it. See what you like. Display units. Uh, I'm an Iowa guy. I use Imperial. It's just what I was raised on. Metric is fine. If you're more of a metric guy, flip to metric. But I, I use Imperial. These are the two important settings, or three in my mind. Four. Car auto zoom on part. Say no to that. That way it gives you the option to zoom on the part. Uh, Otherwise, the zooming can get kind of goofy. Um, so set that to no. Unrealistic wheel size. I hate this. I mean, who wants wheels that are 15 times the size of what they should be for a car? Set that to no. I like enable travel fees set to no. That way you can go to the junkyard for free. You can go to barns for free. You don't have to pay the $100 gas fee to go to those places. Do what you will, but I like it set to no. This is an important one. Cars available everywhere. One of the most enjoyable parts of this game for me, finding an old car, repairing it, getting it to 100%, finding it at the junkyard, tore to heck, uh, and then getting it to 100%. The default on the game is certain cars can only be available at the car shop, meaning the in-game car dealership. So you're buying a car that's already 100%. To me, it's just not as cool as repairing the car and restoring it. So I prefer to find my Ferrari, my uh, BMW at the junkyard and then restore it to 100%. I think that's fun as heck. So that's why I have that set to cars available everywhere. So generally, I like to find my cars at the junkyard or a barn. Hit save to save your settings. Settings save, go back. Then hit play, select a new save. Um, for me, I have my original save, my P. Parker 77 save. And then this we're going to call the guide save. Then you have options. Expert mode for experienced players. It removes descriptions of the parts and the bolts outline. I like this. I think this is the best way to play. Uh, you get double experience. Sandbox, it's fine. You just get unlimited money. I think there's more fun in the game to play without sandbox mode so that you can have the achievement of gaining some money realizing ah, i really want to buy this but i have to save up for it i want to restore this car but i got to get some resources first i think that's easier so we're going to set it to expert that'll go ahead and load up the game Wait for the load. All right, we're loaded. Welcome to Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. 
this is your new garage. Take a look around. Get to know your new workspace. You have at your disposal an old adapted gas station with its surroundings. Complete orders. Purchase and renovate cars. Expand your garage. Good luck. This is fun. So here's our car shop. It's an old gas station. You actually can't pump gas here. We have an old F-150. Probably an 80-something Ford, it looks like. Uh, probably for picking up cars. That's great. And then we have the back of the shop here. That's where you're going to get your dyno at some point. That's where your car wash goes. That's where your paint shop goes. Um, that's where your scrap bench ends up. All right. So we're in here. At, let's go out front. To open doors, you just click on them, by the way. Left click. Let's go ahead and right click here. We're going to go to our orders. And here is our first story order. You know it's a story order because it says story order. It's a 1977, this is a Cadillac, but they call it a Luxor Baron because they apparently didn't pay Cadillac to use its name. Hi, I was just passing by and I noticed your repair shop. It's good that somebody took care of that old ruined petrol station. The car that I'm coming with today is quite a recent purchase. It was used on a daily basis. The condition is rather okay. It would be good to check the oil levels and the tires. That should be no problem for you. If you manage, then perhaps this won't be our last meeting. See you. So we know we have to change the oil, drain the oil, and refill it with new, and there'll be other tasks that we have to accomplish. So this is the first order we're going to take. Go here to take order. All right. So here's the old Cadillac. Not a interact with the car you just click on the part so i just open the doors open the trunk by clicking on it do you want to get in the car and look at it sure click on it and you're in the car and you're looking at it pretty neat and to get out of it escape now the first thing we want to do is want to move this car into our shop so we're going to right click on it this brings up an active wheel this is where you're going to interact with the game the most so we're going to take this car. We're going to move the car to the car lifter A. Okay. Done. And get it up in the air. And I'm going to check a video setting here real quick. There we go. All right. So we have our car on the lift. Let's right click on it, go to car status, and car phone here. This is our order. So we know we have some brake pads that we need to address, two brake pads, a fuel pump, an oil filter, a round air filter, four tires. Then we have to change the oil and drain it, and there'll be other tasks. Brake fluid, power steering fluid, and refill the windshield washer fluid. So why don't we do these first? So how do we get there? Let's click on the hood. That pops it up. Here's our windshield washer fluid. Now to put new fluid in, you want to go to right-click here. We're already in the part unmount phase, so we don't actually have to right-click. It's just left-click on the little tab, just like in your real car. You just flip this up. Well, we're going to do that by left clicking. We'll get that little green circle. Then here's our windshield washer fluid bottle. Left click, you're going to start pouring it in. The bottle will be tipped. As soon as it flattens out, you put in enough windshield washer fluid. That part is done. Now, let's go to power steering. You know this is the power steering fluid because it says power steering fluid. <laughs> right click it, go to tools and to the drain tool. We're going to drain this fluid out first. Done. Fluid is drained. And then we're going to go to part unmount, unmount the cap, and fill the fluid. Bottle will tilt here, and we have enough power steering fluid. Now the brake fluid is the next part. That brake master cylinder sits back here on the firewall. Now to move between parts, we were on the power steering fluid. 
I just zoomed out with my mouse wheel. I'm going to click here on the alternator, our power steering pump, and click back here on the brake master cylinder. There's a little bit of fluid there. So right click on it, go to your additional tools, drain tool, and then let's drain the brake fluid out. Okay, the brake fluid's drained. Now right click again, the bottom one, part unmount, unmount the cap, and we can put in new brake fluid. Now we'll wait for that brake fluid can to tilt. There it goes, and we have filled with brake fluid. We're done, hands are off, hit escape. There you go. Now, do, did we complete that part of the mission that we had to do? Yeah, how do you know? Right click, go to cart status on our phone, other task. Brake fluid, drain and refill with new, done. Power steering, drain and refill with new, done. Re and refill windshield washer fluid. So those parts are done. Now we have to drain the oil, refill it with new, and we have to replace the fuel pump, the round air filter, and four tires. So how do we get to the air filter? Well, it's right here on the top of the car. And just by the way it is, you can see this is filthy. It's just black junk all on that air filter. How do you take it off? Well, you have to take off the cover. So click on the cover, we'll get the green wheel, and there'll be a bolt here. So the green wheel is telling the game, my mechanic wants to remove this part. Once you've acknowledged that you want to remove the part, you have to find the bolts you want to remove, click on the bolts, remove the bolt. Then take the air filter off, click on the air filter, air filter is off. Okay, so we have the air filter off. How do we get a new air filter? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. What I like to do is go to my inventory, which I get to it by hitting I. The other way to get to it, right click in space. The top part of your wheel is your inventory. Okay. Here's the round air filter. Right click on that. That just added it to your shopping list. You could also highlight the part and hit this button down here that says add to shopping list. How can you access your shopping list? Hit tab. There's your shopping list. Round air filter to carb. So let's go over to our computer. And these are the different stores you can purchase parts from on your computer. We're gonna go to the car parts shop, which they even label this as the main shop. We'll highlight it. Here's all the parts you could potentially buy. 68 pages of parts. Now, you could definitely just search through this, find that part that you want, and buy it. That's perfectly reasonable to do that. You could go in here and type in what you want. Let's say I want a piston. Type in piston. Enter. There's pistons. Great. Now, the other way to do it, go to your main shop again. Hit tab. Pull up your parts list. Click the part you want. And it automatically fills your search engine with that. Here's our round air filter for a two-carb engine. We'll click on it. We want to buy one, buy part, boom, we bought the air filter. Escape out of the computer, come back to the car, right, uh, right click, go to part mount. So you see how it's got the gear with the green plus. Then you'll get an outline of the part you want to mount. So you select it, hold down your left click, and then it'll pop up with what parts are available that can go into that slot. So we have the old air filter, or the new air filter. So clearly we're gonna put on the new air filter, but you wanna make sure you're selecting the new air filter because sometimes the game won't select the one that makes the most logical sense to you. Now we can see that we have the outline of the air filter cover. So click that till you see the green wheel complete. It'll give you the option for the only air filter cover we have. Click that, put the bolt on. Ta-da, you have replaced the air filter on your car. And if you want to right click, go to car status, you can see the round air filter two carb has a green checkbox by it. So we have completed that part. Great, so now we have to look for brake pads, the fuel pump, change the oil and switch out some tires. So to access those things, let's get this car up in the air. Now, which brake pads do we have to replace? Well, let's look at this car. We look at this reel, 
Those are drum brakes in the back of this car. Uh, drum brakes, clearly there's no brake pads for those of you who know anything about brakes. Uh, here we have a caliper and we have a brake pad. Now is that the one we want to replace? So let's step back for a second. Right click on your car. There's an examine mode down here at the bottom. Click that. And you can see these tires have been identified as orange, so it's telling us these tires need to be replaced. And then if we look at that caliper, right inside of it, you see that sliver of red? That's a bad brake pad. Go over here, sliver of red, bad, bad brake pad. The game has already identified those for us. So that's useful. Useful to use the examine mode, especially on the, um, on the, uh, story orders because they will highlight the parts that they've already told you they want replaced so if you're not sure which part you need to look at use the examine mode to examine the parts and they'll be highlighted by a different color now the other thing when you're in examine mode if you want to say well is there other parts here that are bad just click on this with your left click and hold it down and what the mechanic is doing here is, is he's putting his mechanics eyes on these parts and he's just looking at them to say, hey, are any of these parts bad? And then you'll get color rate colors of these. Same here, I'm gonna click on the cross member and I'm identifying other parts that may or may not be bad. This can be very useful when you're diagnosing a car, a customer's car, a uh, car that you bought from the junkyard or the barn or wherever. What parts are bad? What parts do I need to replace? Definitely on customer cars, these are very useful things. The other thing you'll notice is as I'm doing this, watch your experience. Every part you looked at, put your peepers on and decided, is this a good part or a bad part? You get two experience. It's actually a pretty easy way to level up uh, and get your mechanic uh, to move up in levels. All right, so we know we're going to replace the tires. So to get out of examine mode, right click on the car, hit normal mode, and we're back to normal. So let's take these wheels off. To take the wheels off, I'm standing out here. I'm gonna click on the wheel. That moves the mechanic to focus on the wheel. Click on the wheel and hold down your left click. It's telling the game, I wanna remove this wheel and it'll give you the option then to remove the bolts. So we'll take these bolts off. Bolts off. Then we're gonna take off the caliper. So I'm clicked on the caliper. The bolts for the caliper on the back there's two, done. And there's the brake pad, brake pad is off. And let's go over here. Now, how did I do that, you ask? Well, if you're on one part and you want to go to another, so this is the wheel we just took off, I wanna to go to the other side. Now I could hit escape, walk my mechanic to that other side. One thing I like to do is I just use my WASD keys to kind of change my mechanics tilt and view. I see this wheel over here, highlight on the wheel, left click. It moves your mechanic to that part. I'm on that wheel, let's remove it. There we go. Let's take off the caliper and take off the brake pad, done. So that brake pads are off and two wheels are off. We know we have to replace these two wheels on the back here too, so I clicked on that wheel. Let's head back here, take this wheel off. And let's go to this wheel and take this wheel off. And where's the fuel pump? Well, here's the fuel tank. Click on the fuel tank. And right at the top of the fuel tank, fuel pump. Take it out. Okay, so now we have in our inventory the fuel pump that we need to replace. We have the rims and the tires on the rims. We have bad brake pads that we need to replace. The old air filter. So let's do some break down here. So we just need to break these tires off the rims. How do you do that? Well, if you go over here, 
we have a, a tire machine and a wheel balancer. So click on your tire machine. It'll give you another wheel. These wheels pop up everywhere in the game. Everything is a wheel. So we're going to separate the part. That means take the tire off the rim. So we'll click here. Let's take the tire off the rim. Move. Separate. With four tires, obviously. So we'll take four tires off. Separate. While that's separating, some Pepsi Max, my friend. And separate. All right. I think that is all the tires. Great. Okay. So we have standard tires. Now we can add a standard tire to our shopping list. So let's right click on the standard tire. Go to our shopping list. The round air filter we already bought. So let's just take that off our list. So standard tire 215.75 R15. Now there's an issue with this that it's somewhat of a pet peeve of mine. So if we go to the store, where do you buy tires? Tire shop. So I'm going to pull up my shopping list. Standard tire, right? So I just, on our shopping list, it says 215.75 R15. If I click on a standard tire, it does not automatically fill that wheel size in. And I can't, when I'm in this screen, hit my tab and pull up my shopping list so I can remember what the heck I wanted to type into these fields. So that's somewhat irritating to me. So how do I get around dealing with that? Here's how I get around it. Piece of paper. This is old school stuff, but it works really good. You grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down your tire size. So we need to buy four standard tires that are 215, 75, 15 um, size. Now, what do all those numbers mean? So the width of the tire. So if you're looking at a car from behind, the big number, the, the first number that's listed on a tire, that's the width of the tire. The profile, that's the distance from the, that's the sidewall. So that's the distance from the rim up to the tread, the sidewall, that's your profile. That's the second number. The third number that's listed is the rim size. So in this case, we need size 15s. That's the rim size. We need ones that are 215 inches wide, or 215 wide, not necessarily inches. It's not 215 inches wide, excuse me. And then the profile of this tire is 75. And we need four of these bad boys. So we'll go ahead and buy four tires. Now there was other parts that we needed to purchase too, correct? We need a fuel pump and two brake pads. So I just added those to our shopping list. Shopping list, excuse me. Now this is not at the tire shop. The computer's smart. It remembers the last store you were at. How do you get back to the main menu? Click home, go to your car parts shop, now, you can definitely go off your parts list. The other way is that there's these icons at the top that limit the shop to brake parts, exhaust parts, gear shift, uh, gears parts, suspension parts, engine parts. So if you go to brakes, there's brake pads right there. Because there's only, what is this? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine brake parts. So just find the brake tab. I think that's quicker. And buy two brake pads. Now, if you checked your shopping list, we also had two brake pads on our shopping list. So I'll just remove that from our shopping list. Now, fuel pump. Where's the fuel pump at? Right there. Pull up my shopping list. Remove that. Standard tire we bought. There we go. Now, how do we put these tires on? Back to the tire machine. Go to not separate this time to install. So we're going to take our rim install the new tire not the old tire the new tire it will install once a tire is installed and you do a new install of the tire you have to balance your tire so take it off the machine so take go to your wheel balancer click on it hit balance 
this is a mini game. So you line up that green bar with this arrow, press the space bar. That's where they put the little weight on the tire, basically. Done. So that wheel is balanced. So let's install the next one. And then I'm just going to do this at speed. So this one's installed. So I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to go ahead and get the next one installing. And go over here and balance the wheel while that one's installing. And by the time we take that off, that wheel will be done. We can install the fourth and last one. Balance this one. Take that wheel, balance it. There we go. So all of our tires are balanced, and now we can go back to our car and start installing them. So right click on this, go to part mount, select your wheel, and install. Now in this case, this car has the same size tires on the front and the back. So any of those four tires we selected would have been fine. Some vehicles, you want to make sure you're installing the right tire in the right position. So if you had a car that had wide tires in the back, but narrow tires in the front, make sure when you're going to install your wheels, you're putting the wide ones on the back. So every time you select a part, like we're going to put our fuel pump in here, click on it. We don't want to put in the old one. We want to put in the new one. So make sure whichever part is up here is the one you actually want to install in that spot. New fuel pump. Okay. So I'm going to move my mechanics view. There's the wheel outline. Click on it. It moves the mechanic to the wheel. I use my WASD to change my mechanics view. Click on the wheel. To, it gives you the option of which part to put in that spot. And that wheel's installed. Now let's head up to the front. I just clicked on the gearbox there. Clicked on the brake disc. And here's the brake pad. Select the brake pad. There's the 100% one. Brake caliper. And brake caliper cylinder. Attach the two bolts. And then we can put on the nice new wheel. she goes. Then we'll click on that brake pad on the other side so our mechanic moves to that side. Put in the 100% brake pad, the caliper, and caliper cylinder, which are not in great repair, but the customer apparently does not care. Here's the wheel. And attach the nice new wheel. she goes. So now, where are we at on our customer's order? Right click again, go to car status on the phone. So we did the brake pads, the fuel pump. We have to replace the oil filter and we have to drain the oil. But we got the four tires done, the air filter done, and we did the other fluids. So how do we replace the oil filter and drain the oil? Well, there's a tool for that. Let's go over to our drain bin right here, which is by your computer. Click on that, just a left click, and then select Move Equipment. We're going to move equipment to our first lift, Car Lifter A. We only have one lift. Go back to our machine, our drain uh, machine. Click on it and hit Use Equipment. And you'll see the oil draining. Oil's drained. Click on it, move the equipment back. Then once that oil's drained, click on the oil pan. Then you can see the oil filter. It's right there off the oil pan. And we remove the oil filter. So we have to buy a new oil filter. So we need a V8 oil filter. So we're going to do it this way where I just type oil filter. Now here's our options for oil filters. We need an oil filter V8. Buy it. Buy it. And that's just to show a different way of way, a way you could search if you didn't use the shopping list. The shopping list is the easiest way to do it, honestly. Okay, so click on the oil pan, 
and right click, go to part mount, and you'll see the outline of the oil filter. Click on it, select the 100% oil filter. We have a nice new oil filter on. Now to put oil in the car, you have to get it down out of the air. So come over to this side of your lift, click down, comes down from the air, open up the hood, click in the engine on the engine and the engine compartment to move your mechanic into the engine. There's the oil fill plug, click on it, that will remove it. And left click and hold to put oil in. And once the can tilts, your oil's filled. Hit escape and you have now filled the car with oil. If you want to check, there's a dipstick here. Pull the dipstick and there's your oil. Right in the middle of the hash marks. Hit escape and it puts the dipstick back in. Hit escape again, that gets your mechanic out of the engine bay. Let's close the hood, right click on it, go to car status, and you'll see we have green check marks across everything, green check marks on the oil filter drain and refill with new and all of our fluids we already did. So to complete the order, go over here to CR. So it's the customer repair order. We did the story order, get 935 uh, credits. I count this as bucks or money. We get 25 for draining the oil, 65 for the other task. We get a bonus and a job bonus. So a total of 1,886 credits. Hit finish order and you are done. And we leveled up to level two, that's exciting. So we go to inventory again, and we got a case. Cases are very useful. You can get many things from cases. You can get uh, credits, so more money. You can get uh, blue uh, material, which is called scrap, which you use to augment parts to make them even a higher performance part. Very useful. You can get experience. You can get barn maps. Uh, crates, cases are very useful. And you'll get cases from the story orders. You'll also get cases once you get a, uh, a skill point occasionally for customer, uh, customer orders. You can get them at barns too. Very useful. So let's go ahead and open the case. You'll get five random cards in each case. Pick number one, and we'll go with number four. Hey, we got a barn map and some experience, so let's collect that. Now, what do you do with barn maps? You click on it, yes. It adds it to your inventory of barn maps. To get to that, click in the middle here, or just right click to bring up your wheel, go to map, and we'll have barns we have one but we can't get that to level 10. that's okay but we at least have one barn map unlocked now go back to our inventory here's the old parts we just took off that car now we could hold on to these if we wanted to what we're i'd recommend doing at this point just sell these because you need the cash so to sell them, you could sell them one by one just by left clicking on it. It'll say, do you want to sell this for a credit? And you'll say yes. The other way to do it, hit this V, well, hit V, or you can just click on it. Hit sell parts, and we're going to sell everything that's below 56%. Just because that way it sold all those parts. All right, so that's sold. We are a level two, so if you come over to your tool bench, now we can assign new skill points. The first skill point I would purchase, the regular customer. So we get 5% discount on buying parts at the uh, shops. That would be where I would put my first point. So that's what I'm recommending. The other ones here, uh, fast hands, increasing screwing speed, unmounting speed, very useful. Uh, renovator being able to fix parts we don't have a repair bench yet so we can't really use that yet moving faster just hold shift on your mechanic and run fast um, examining part time yeah somewhat useful but not not a first point the other thing here is the garage tool so this is your upgrades of your mechanic and then over here is the upgrades of your garage Garage expansion costs 10K, so we're gonna have to save up money for that. Sorry, I'm getting a little dry in the voice there. All right, uh, and then we have some diagnostic tools. 
these would be the first things I would purchase. The onboard diagnostic scanner or OBD scanner. It can be used in more modern cars. It's a very useful diagnostic tool. You're going to use it in story orders. You can use it on customer orders to figure out things. Uh, and you get experience for using it. So I would buy that. So we have an OBD scanner. Fuel pressure meter. Again, another diagnostic tool. It's only 300 credits. Buy it. Electronic multimeter. Buy it. These are standard tools that you're going to need in your mechanics workbench to diagnose cars. Compressor tester, same thing. Buy it. And then the tread uh, gauge, buy that. Tablet, 500 bucks. We have 2,500 credits. I would go ahead and buy the tablet. The benefit of having the tablet versus just your computer is you can be under the car and like, oh, I need an oil filter. Hit T, pulls up the tablet, and that logs right into the customer's store, and you can just buy an oil filter. Boom. And you didn't have to get out of your car, go over to your computer, buy that, and then come back. So that is where we're going to end guide number one. So we did the first story car. We learned how to take tires off. We learned how to drain oil and replace oil. We learned how to drain and uh, replace fluids. Uh, that was a very good first start. We learned how to set some settings up. And then the most important thing to do right here at the end, escape, save game. Pretty useful thing to remember. So this will be guide number one. Guide number two will be picking up with the second story car. Um, we'll do some more tips along the way. Hopefully this one is not a laggy version like the first version I had put out a few days ago. I'll take that one down and replace it with this. Uh, thanks for your feedback on this. Uh, Lucas, uh, Isaac, and Parker, I hope this is a good guide and you guys are going to enjoy Car Mechanic like I do. Uh, thank you all. We will talk to you later in guide number two.